Well, amen and praise the Lord. Good to see you here again tonight. This is Central Baptist Church in San Sabbath. It's uh, our Sunday night service, and we're glad to be able to preach the Word of God. And I pray that you'll be a bless, get a blessing from this tonight. I am uh, pray that the uh, uh, camera will do better tonight. This morning when I live streamed it, that was the first time I had done that personally. And I had my camera wrong, and it looked like I was preaching on my side. So maybe everything will do better tonight. I want you to listen. I'm just going to do a song before we get started, and then we'll just, I'll do a quick service tonight. But I pray it'll be a blessing to you. I want to talk to you about uh, uh, two ways, two evil, the evil and good, uh, conflicts in life. And uh, so I'll be talking about sin and righteousness, the two conflicts. And so I want to sing you a song first tonight that I wrote. God gave me this song. and. Uh, it's called Sin Will Take You Farther. And so you listen to the words. Sin will take you farther than you want to go.
Are you willing the consequences of your sins to face? Are you willing the consequences of your sins to fail? Well, that's the truth. There's many folks in this world know that. Started out, didn't think sin would bother them. But now they're hooked on sin and bogged down in sin, wrapped up in sin, in bondage to sin, can't get out. Uh, and so uh, the consequences of sin far more expensive than a person ever thinks about in the beginning. When I think about that, I think about Moses. Uh, the Bible said that Moses, when he came to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. And so I want us to look just a little bit tonight for just a few minutes. And uh, in the book of Genesis, I'm going to show you where sin came from and how it all got here and how we got in the mess we're in in this world today. You can all trace everything back to the garden. And uh, Genesis chapter number 2. In Genesis chapter number 2. And I want to read just a few verses here. And... Uh, so, well, let's see, I guess I'll read verse number 9. Verse number 9. The Bible said, And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight, and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Good and evil. A contrast right at the beginning that God put in the garden. A test of man's of obedience to prove that man has a free will. That's why God put that in the garden. These folks say there's no free will. You don't have a choice. Oh, you, we have choices uh, in life. And this proves it right in the very first, the second chapter of the uh, Word of God, the book of God. Uh, man, God put a tree in the midst of the garden. He said you can uh, eat of all of the trees except that one, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Let's pray for a minute and then we'll begin the message. Father, thank you for this time to be together. Pray you'd bless God as I preach the word of God. These who listen tonight, these who hear it, God, it would uh, uh, speak to their hearts. And God, do only what you can uh, what you can do for them, Lord. They, they, folks that are listening need a touch from heaven, and so God, you just use this message for your glory, and in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Uh, then verse number 17, the Bible said, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Tree of the knowledge of good and evil, knowing uh, right from wrong, knowing what's good, knowing what's evil. God put that, uh, he kept that from man. Man was innocent in the beginning. And uh, disobedience brought us to where we are today, all the evil that's in the world. Matter of fact, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 and 27, the Bible said this, For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin, but a fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. Willful sin is a total disregard of the truth of God and disrespect for the holiness of God. That's what sin is. There's therefore nothing else for God to do but judge sin. By the way, all sin is willful. Nobody has ever said, oops, I accidentally indulged in fornication or adultery. No, it was intentional. It was willful. The Word says in 1 John chapter 1, verse number 9, I like this, though He said, but if we confess our sin, 
He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God will forgive our sins that are confessed if we are truly sorry for those sins rather than being sorry about getting caught and exposed as a sinner. We're not sinners tonight because we sin. We sin because we're sinners. And sin must be dealt with. In the beginning, God dealt with it. He said there's a consequence to sin. And we know what that is. Romans chapter 6, verse number 23. The wages of sin is death. God told Adam and Eve, In the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. There's a consequence of violating God's word, uh, and that is death. Uh, sin can be forgiven, but many times the damage caused by the sin cannot be undone. Some things that you lose through sin, you can never get back. You can be cleansed, but the loss remains. There's constant conflict between good and evil in this world. We know that's true right now in our society. You just see so many things going on. We see good and evil in, in, in conflict, in warfare. Paul spoke of that battle in Romans chapter 7, 21, where he said, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. He had just said in verse number 19 or verse number 15 and 20, and I want to read that in Romans chapter number 7. In Romans chapter 7. <clears throat> if you got a Bible tonight, you can... Try to run through there with me. I usually go pretty fast on it. I'm hard to keep up with. In Romans chapter number 7, verse 15 to 20, for, the, for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would do, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth, in me. We have a constant battle. There's a constant somebody that's with us all the time. And it's that old sin nature that we have to deal with. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For the good that I would I do not. But the evil which I would not that I do. Now if I do that I would not. It is no more I that do it. But sin that dwelleth in me. And I've used verse 21 already. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. We live in a constant battle, on a, on a battlefield, on, in, in, in a war that's going on in our lives and in our members, warring against our members. We're fighting a battle. Evil against good. Uh, constantly uh, in a uh, we're at a constant warfare. And Paul uses that terminology. We know that the, 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 the devil, evil, good and evil are constantly at war. And evil never rests or takes a break. They don't give you, uh, evil does not ever give you a break. Never give you a chance. It's constantly crowding for your attention. Screaming for your uh, yielding to its influences. Uh, Paul used that terminology in verse uh, number 23 and when he said, But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. Paul is in a, he's in a conflict. And evil and good is constantly... Uh, then he says in verse number 24... O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? No rest from the conflict. Just in a constant battle. You've got to keep your guard up all the time. 
The devil don't ever sleep. The Lord never slumbers nor sleeps. Neither does the devil and his cohorts. Always busy trying to get you sidetracked. The devil knows if he can get you sidetracked, get you get your mind off the Lord, get your mind on your on your life, getting your mind on the situation and the circumstances you're in, getting your mind on the COVID nineteen virus, getting your mind on your financial difficulties, getting your mind on your family, and getting your mind on your job, and getting mind on and everything else. He gets your mind off of the Lord, and then you're going to be in trouble. And he knows that. He, 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 he can ruin your testimony. He can't t if you're saved, he can't get your soul, but he can certainly mess up your life. There are no rest. We must keep our eyes and ears open to recognize sin. That's evil. And also to recognize good. I think a great problem in our society is that sin doesn't seem uh, too bad anymore. But Paul said we need to see it for what it is. Verse number 13, look what Paul said. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid, but sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become, here it is, exceeding sinful. Exceeding sinful. Uh, most folks don't see sin as exceeding sinful. Or there mean beyond measure, unmeasurable, uh, surpasses the usual mark. Exceeding sinful. That's the way God sees sin. We see it as little white sins and uh, gray sins and gray areas, but God sees all sin as black and vile and wicked. And the only way you'll ever get right with God is when you see your sin the way God sees your sin. Vile and wicked. Exceeding a sinful. Uh, because of sins, exceeding sinfulness, we had to have a exceeding sinless Savior. Second Corinthians chapter five verse twenty one: For He hath made Him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Knew no sin, neither was guile found in His mouth. He He reviled not again when He was reviled. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3 to 9. And I want to run over there in the Bible. In Isaiah chapter number 53, verse number 3 down through 9. This is speaking of the Lord. This is a prophetic uh, word from Isaiah in, in Isaiah 53. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. His grief, your grief, and my grief, he was acquainted with that. He knew it. The Bible said he, he was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. He had no sin. When he died, he didn't die for his sins. He died for mine and he died for yours. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. God put it all on him. Jesus took it all upon himself. Every vile, wicked thing that, that we'd ever done, Jesus said, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll suffer for it. I'll take the punishment for him. Oh, thank God for that wonderful day that he took my punishment. What Adam lost in the garden, his innocence, his sinlessness, what he lost, in the garden, by disobedience, Jesus gained back on the cross by obedience. Obedience to the death, even the death of the cross. There are only two ways to go in this world. There are not three or four or five different ways. There's only two, good or evil. There are no straddling the fence. You're either on one side or you're on the other. You're either good or you're evil. There's no in-between. 
Jesus said, I would that you were cold or hot. That's what he said to the church in Laodicea. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spew thee out of my mouth. A lukewarm church or Christian makes the Lord sick. We're talking about the conflicts tonight between good and evil. And we all deal with it daily. We're coming to the time in our nation when we're seeing it play out right now in the political arena. Isaiah chapter 5, verse number 20 and following, he says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. They're doing it. That put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes. The Bible says in Romans chapter 1, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. They, uh, woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. It all started uh, in the Garden of Eden when they chose the lie of the serpent over the truth of God. Who was right? God said if thou eat of that tree, you'll die. Satan said, uh, Yeah, ye shall not surely die, but will be as God's knowing. Here it is, good and evil. Which one of them was right? Well, the Bible said over there in uh, Genesis chapter 5, verse 5, And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. How about that? God was right, and the devil was wrong. Uh, and he's right now too. God's always right. Uh, he said you shall not eat surely but will be as God knowing good and evil. That's what the devil said. But God said you're now condemned and accountable for your actions. And Adam died 900 years later. Look what God said to Cain, the first man born of natural parents in chapter 4 in Genesis. When uh, he brought his fruit, God re required a blood sacrifice. He demonstrated that with uh, Adam and Eve there in the garden when they uh, tried to make uh, aprons out of fig leaves. And God said, I, don't, I won't accept that. I won't accept your works for that. It's going to take blood. And, and he had to kill some innocent animals and made skins and covered them uh, robed them. God put the robe on them. God wanted to clothe them. But now Cain tries to bring the works of his own hands and fruit and God rejected it. And then the Bible said this, if thou doest well, he's talking to Cain, if thou doest well, what is that? That's good. Shalt thou then not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, that's evil. Sin lieth at the door. Sin is the reason of all evil. It's all evil, sin. That's where, that's where evil comes from because of that sin nature that entered into our lives when our parents back in the Garden of Eden violated the Word of God. God told them what the consequences would be and they did it anyway. Cain did not do anything good in his life. It was all evil. He was proud, angry, jealous, and he was a murderer. He murdered his own brother. Uh, he he went uh, evil to the he was evil to the core, and he never repented of his evil. When sin and evil entered this world, it came with a vengeance and with an agenda. In Romans chapter five verse twelve, the Bible said this: Wherefore, by one man sin entered into the world. And death by sin, and so death passed upon all men. Passed upon all men, was handed down. We inherited it. For that all have sinned. That's the consequences. Satan's goal 
was then and is now to destroy every vestige of righteousness and goodness that God demands. John chapter 10 and verse number 10, Jesus said it like this, The thief cometh, that's the devil, thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Evil and good. Good and evil. The very first day God made the tree of good and evil. And Adam and Eve violated his word. They ate of that, the fruit of that tree in a disobedience to God's word. And sin passed upon all men. And everybody from that day on has been a sinner and has a death sentence on. Will die. Jesus regained that when he went to the cross and died in our place. He said, He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he that believeth in me shall never die. Jesus said that, and that's true. I will never die. This old body may lay down and be put in the grave, but I will never die. Uh, when you hear that I've died, don't believe a word of it. I'll be more alive then than I've ever been in all of my life. So we see that evil comes from the devil and it's still working. He's still working. And good comes from the Lord and He's still working. And by the way, we win, whether you know it or not, we win. I've read the last chapter in the book and we win. Uh, in closing tonight, Paul said in Romans chapter 12, verse number 21, Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Whatever or whosoever you yield to is who or what is going to rule your life. Good or evil. Which is it? And that's what uh, Joshua told the children of Israel. If it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, then choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the God's on the other side of the flood or the God in whose land of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Good or evil, what will it be? Let's go to the Lord. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for your goodness and blessing. Thank you for the day. I pray, oh, blessed Holy Spirit, would you take this simple sermon that's been preached. Would you send it forth and send it out with power? Oh, Holy Spirit, do what you want to with it. Help us to look at our lives and see where we stand. We're on one side or the other. We can't straddle the fence. We're on one side or the other. And so help us to, to choose right, Lord. You, your word tells us you put life and death before, so let us choose life. Thank you for this privilege to just preach the Bible. And now use it, use this message for your honor and your glory in the wonderful holy name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for listening tonight.